What are you doing quoting facts? Have you turned right wing? I mean, Super come right on, wing. guys. Super. I'm wearing a red dress. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> right. not, maybe not a red message. pill, but a red dress. <laughs> no, guys, seriously. Anna Kasparian has officially distanced herself from the, the woke left and is now identifying as a right winger. Or at least that's what she's saying in this clip. And let me tell you, the reaction from the Young Turks fan base has been wild. Fans are absolutely losing it, calling on Jen Uger to fire her immediately. There's a ton of pressure on him to cut ties with Anna, but so far he's holding off. If I had to guess, it seems like Anna might actually want to leave TYT. She's probably locked into some sort of contract, or has some other obligation that's keeping her from stepping away for now, or maybe even for good. Plus, there's a good chance she owns a stake in the network, which complicates things. It's definitely an interesting situation, and it raises questions about how much longer she'll stick around. Anyway, let's dive into this clip of Anna Kasparian going off on the woke left again and making it clear that she no longer considers herself part of that movement and now aligns with right-wing ideas. Let's see how she lays it all out. Guys, we talk about it in the context of corporations, but remember, you know, Police unions have a lot of power. They also do lobbying. So don't make the assumption that it's only corporations. Unions also have a tremendous amount of influence over politicians because they also contribute a lot of money uh, to various politicians. And so do some foreign governments, I hear. Um, okay, <laughs> so look, guys, it, Sean O'Brien is, if you think he's like some sort of Republican or operative, no, not even close. He nearly got into a fist fight with a Republican senator, Senator Wayne Grow from Oklahoma, like just about a year ago. Do we have that on tape? We, we do, do have right? That video. Here, Let's take a look at this. Quit the tough guy act in these Senate hearings. You know where to find me, any place, any time, cowboy. Sir, this is a time, this is a place. If you want to run your mouth, we can be two consenting adults. We can finish it here. Okay, that's fine. Perfect. You want to do it now? I'd love to do it right now. Well, stand your butt up then. You stand your butt up. If you're enjoying this content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out a ton. Now let's jump back into the video. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold, stop it. Is that your Fire. solution every poll? No, no, sit down. Fire, sit down. Okay. You know, you're, you're a United States senator. Sit down. Oh, okay, okay. Sit down, please. All right. No, no, no. Bernie's the best part. No, right? I love I love every part of that video, right? <laughs> Especially because it, during one of the shots, all you see is Bernie's hand doing yeah. like the typical Bernie hand thing that he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you look, even if you didn't hear his uh, classic voice, you would know it from the hand motion. 100%. Right? <laughs> okay. you're, you're United States Senator, sit down. You're United States Senator. <laughs> but you see, that's Sean O'Brien, not like from 20 years ago, but like from a year ago, barely, maybe yes. not even, getting into a fight with a Republican senator because he's not playing and he's not trying to pick sides. He's trying to look out for his union members, and that's what he's supposed to do. So now go to over the Democrats, Chuck Schumer running his mouth. Uh, well, okay, but guys, when Chuck Schumer and other Democrats and the other Republicans, so Republicans, Teamsters, if you're watching or anybody that's watching, Republicans are the party of the rich. They're party of big business. They've never helped you, they're never gonna help you. The way I see it, neither the Democrats nor the Republicans are really going to help you. The only real difference is that Republicans are more upfront about where their priorities lie. They'll tell you straight up that they're looking out for big businesses and wealthy people. Sure, they'll also say they're trying to support middle class families and preserve traditional values like the nuclear family, but at least they don't sugarcoat it. On the other hand, the Democrats like to promise all kinds of things, taxing the rich, canceling student debt, and making big changes to help ordinary people. But then you have situations like Jen Uger's nephew, Hassan Piker, selling Tax the Rich merch while living in a $20 million mansion in Beverly Hills. It's hard not to see the irony there. At the end of the day, both parties are tied to powerful interests. The Democrats tell you they're fighting for the little guy, but they're often just as bought out as anyone else, with deep ties to big business and even foreign interests like China. They make a lot of promises they rarely keep. So yeah, both parties lie. The only difference? Republicans just seem to lie a little less because they're more upfront about whose side they're on. Anytime that there's a strike, they say fire him. Donald Trump brags about firing everybody and say, oh yeah, I'd fire, 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 right? Mm -hmm. They hate the workers. So that's, to me, that's a given. But when you come over the Democrats and 
So Chuck Schumer and all you guys, you take money from the corporations and you kiss their ass. You take money from me and you spit in my face. Why should I applaud it and pretend it's raining? No, if you're gonna take my money, then you're gonna do what I tell you to do, just like every goddamn donor, okay? If you say, hey, don't, we're not taking money anymore, we're not corrupt anymore, great, I love it. Yeah. Because then we're gonna, labor's gonna win because we have more people on our side and we have more voters, right? But if you're gonna do your corruption and the only people you don't listen to is labor, well, that's a raw deal. Totally. And if you're not calling that out, you're not standing up for your members. So thank you, Sean O'Brien. Definitely. Now, uh, unfortunately, the Democratic Party has been losing working class support, and I dive into that. I just wanted to quickly uh, mention the very right wing piece I wrote recently. Uh, More working class voters are flocking to Trump, can Democrats win them back? In it, I talk about what Democrats can do to win them back. Um, So check that out. It's at uh, Kasparian.substack.com. But Anna, wait a minute. Yeah, super right wing. I I didn't know you were gonna be honest in Substack. I I mean, quoting polling about how the voter, the non-college educated voters are going towards Trump. What are you doing quoting facts? Have you turned right wing? I mean, Super come right on, wing. guys. Super. I'm wearing a red dress. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> right. not, maybe not a red message. pill, but a red dress. <laughs> no, guys, seriously, and all kidding aside, so for those of you who don't know any of the internet drama, etc., people yelling at Anna for saying, oh, for like titles like that. The issue with the Young Turks is that over the years, Jen Uger, Anna Kasparian, and the rest of the team have cultivated an audience that isn't really interested in nuance or facts. Their viewers seem to want the same echo chamber they've built, a space where the right wing and Republicans are always framed as evil. And the only acceptable way forward is to keep pushing further left. Anything short of that is seen as betrayal. So now, when Anna Kasparian starts expressing more nuanced opinions, it's rubbing their audience the wrong way. She's not switching to the alt-right or anything extreme. She's just trying to have more balanced conversations and express honest thoughts. But the fan base they've built over the years doesn't want that. They want the same talking points they're used to, with no deviation from the woke narrative. The real problem is that once you create this kind of rigid audience, it's almost impossible to pivot. Now, Kasparian is facing backlash, with fans demanding she be fired for stepping out of line. And Jen Uger is stuck in a tough spot. If he keeps her on, he risks alienating the audience that expects them to stay in the far left lane. But if he fires her, he locks himself and the channel even deeper into that ideological bubble, with no way out. What makes this situation even trickier is that Uger might agree with some of what Kasparian is saying, but hasn't had the courage to say it himself until now. With Anna taking the lead, he's trying to follow her example, because if he doesn't, he risks looking like a fool. At this point, they're both trying to navigate this shift, but it's clear that it's not going over well with their core audience. What do you guys think? Is this just growing pains for the young Turks? Or is it the beginning of a bigger shift? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. But you gotta at least read the piece and go, "Oh, I get it now. She's trying to help Democrats go in a better direction instead of the direction that they're going, which isn't helping the voters or themselves." If you can't do that level of nuance, you are never going to like the show in the first place. Yeah. Right. So if you want just simple-minded thinking, this is my ideology. I like people who are repeating the same things I repeat all the time. There's a thousand shows on the internet for you. But here we do nuance. We, and we fight for the average American, and we're honest about it. Thanks, Jen, for putting out content like this for people like me. I really appreciate it. But I'm curious, what do you guys think about the stuff Anna Kasparian and Jen Uger have been saying lately? Specifically, how do you feel about Anna's substack and the more nuanced opinions she's been sharing? I personally think it's refreshing, but let's be real. The Young Turks fan base probably isn't going to appreciate it the same way. Honestly, it seems like Anna's only real option might be to leave the Young Turks. The audience they've built over the years just doesn't seem ready to to accept her stepping outside the typical narrative. What do you think? Will Anna stick around, or is it only a matter of time before she moves on? And how do you think Jen Uger will handle the backlash? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm really interested to hear how you think this will all play out.